<clears throat> so uh, welcome to the late morning session for the uh, in the S2S workshop. Um, it is my pleasure to introduce um, Hailin. Hailin works as a researcher at Environment Canada, and um, his research focuses on dynamic processes with a time scale longer than a week that influence medium and extended range forecasts. I thought that was a really nice um, uh, description. Um, uh, he's also an adjunct professor at uh, McGill, and he will be talking about uh, the NAO influence on the MJO. Welcome, Hailin, and thank you so much for um, giving a talk at this workshop. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Judith and uh, Anish for the invitation. Uh, so uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, the NAO influence on the MJO. Uh, it's a bit, a bit different from uh, what we have been listened, have been heard. And uh, I also want to acknowledge my uh, collaborators, Zhu Yong Huang, uh, Harry Handen, and uh, Gilbert Brunet. Okay, so uh, uh, first of all, I want to uh, do a brief summary of the uh, MGO impact on the NAO. It's quite uh, well known, and uh, we also heard uh, quite a lot yesterday. And after that, I will show you uh, some uh, observe, observed uh, NAO influence on the MGO. So uh, it's um, like uh, uh, um, another direction influence. And uh, after that, uh, I will show you uh, the uh, impact of this influence on the uh, forecast scale of the MGO uh, from the S2S models. And uh, then I'll give you some possible explanation for, for uh, why this happens. And finally, it's a summary. Okay, so uh, this, this diagram, uh, we saw it yesterday a couple of times, but uh, in different format. I, I believe uh, uh, Frederick showed this and uh, Jaime also show, showed the similar figures. It, it is the um, composite uh, precipitation of uh, eight phases of the MJO. So what you can see is the, the phase one, two, three, up to phase eight. You see the eastward propagating, propagation of the uh, uh, precipitation anomaly. And uh, the, there's uh, two groups of phases, two, three, and uh, six, seven. Uh, what you can see is there is a dipole structure of the precipitation anomaly with enhanced precipitation and convection in the Indian Ocean and the reduced convection in the Western Pacific. And the phase seven, six is just the opposite. So there's quite a lot of uh, studies uh, demonstrate that uh, this two phases, these two groups, uh, the dipole structure of the precipit uh, convection uh, has the uh, greatest impact on the teleconnection and the northern hemisphere uh, exotropics. So the uh, NAO, and uh, also you, you may also know uh, about NAO, it's one of the most important mode of variability uh, in the northern hemisphere. Uh, it's stronger in the winter season than in summer. And uh, the uh, variance explained by this single mode is quite a lot. Uh, there's about 31% uh, of the variance in winter surface uh, air temperature uh, can be explained by, by this mode alone. Uh, and also uh, not only temperature, there, there's also precipitation and uh, uh, humidity uh, in North, North America and uh, Europe, it's quite uh, uh, significantly influenced by this mode. All right, so uh, I started by uh, the uh, influence of MGO on the NAO, uh, because uh, the, the MGO is a tropical mode and the NAO is a variability in the Northern hemisphere and with centers in the high latitude. So the, the, these two modes, they have teleconnections. So th this is from uh, early study. Uh, we show that uh, the uh, nugget composite of the, uh, uh, of the uh, uh, probability of a occurrence of NAO phase. Uh, for example, this table shows the phase 
one to three to eight of the NGO and the lack uh, of the in, comp, uh, in pentads, that's five days. So zero lag is the same pentad as the, uh, as, uh, as the NGO. Uh, for example, the NGO phase four, there is a 45% chance of uh, upper to sale, that's above normal uh, NO index. So the, there is uh, like an indication that when the NGO is in phase two and three, after about uh, 10, 15 days, there is a high probability of a positive and occurrence. So that's very uh, uh, consistent with what uh, uh, Frederick uh, showed yesterday and also in the study of Kasu. And uh, after MGO phase six and seven, you see the uh, negative, uh, the lower tertiary of the NIO index. So that's the negative NIO. So, uh, okay, let's see this. And the, uh, the mechanism, uh, the, there's an uh, explanation for this lack of teleconnection is uh, one is the possible uh, Rossby wave uh, propagation. And uh, another, there's recent studies show that uh, there's a stratosphere pathway and the uh, NGO can influence the, lo the northern hemisphere NIO. Okay, so that is uh, known. Uh, I have a hard time to uh, control the, uh, okay. So the MGO influence in uh, 2D dimension is for example, the MGO phase three, uh, zero lag, that's a simultaneous. Uh, you see that the positive anomaly of geopotential height anomaly in Northern, uh, North Atlantic, North Pacific, and the wave train uh, just arc to the uh, uh, North Atlantic. And uh, five days later, you see the uh, further development of the uh, geopotential height anomaly in North Atlantic. And uh, another five days later, you see the development of positive NIO. So th this is quite uh, opposite for the MGO phase seven. You see after about 10 days, and uh, there, there is a negative NIO development. So, on the other direction, so today the, my uh, focus is on the uh, NLO influence on the MGO. So it's the uh, uh, opposite direction influence. So the, similarly in that uh, paper we published in 2009, uh, we did the uh, lead lag uh, for, for this uh, uh, MGO and NLO. For example, this is again the face of the MGO and this is the lead. That's so when the NLO lead the MGO by uh, by one, two, three, four uh, to five pentads. So what you can see is that the negative NO lead NGO by about three, four uh, pentads. And the positive, uh, the MGO uh, positive NO lead NGO phase six and seven by about two to four pentads. So the, but, but people can uh, argue that uh, because the uh, MGO uh, propagate eastward and they have influence and uh, when, when they, uh, there is a cycle that, that can have this kind of uh, like a behavior relationship. But actually, uh, as I will show, uh, even when the MGO at first is very weak or there is no MGO at the beginning, the NLO can influence, can uh, in can amplify the, the MGO afterwards. Okay, so uh, the uh, uh, schematic uh, figure of this uh, interaction is the MGO, and when it reach, uh, reaches the uh, Western Pacific, it can uh, send the Rossby wave and uh, influence the NAO. And after the NAO, uh, like, uh, uh, is amplified or it's changed, it can uh, influence the NGO again. And also, if there's no th th this branch, the NAO variability, because there is uh, uh, other mechanisms can generate the NAO, for example, the atmospheric internal dynamics, and then that can also uh, influence the uh, initialization of the NGO. So uh, we look at the uh, regression of uh, 
200 millibar zonal wind with respect to the NL index. Uh, uh, for example, this is the zero lag, uh, that's the simultaneous. The uh, positive NO, you see the uh, increased uh, west wind in the uh, North Atlantic. And uh, five days later, 10 days later, what you can see is that the, this signal is moving southward. And uh, at lag four and lag five, uh, what you can see is that the increase of west wind in the uh, tropical uh, Africa and the uh, Indian Ocean, over the Indian Ocean. So this is uh, signif quite significant. After the, uh, the NAO, uh, the, the, there is a change uh, of zonal wind in, in the tropics. So that is connected to the influence that the, the, the NGO. All right, so uh, what we show here is the uh, zonal, uh, the, the average between uh, 10, between zero and the 90 degree uh, east, uh, that, that's over uh, Africa and the tropical uh, Indian Ocean, the zonal wind. Uh, the X axis is the uh, latitude from uh, uh, 30, 30 degrees south to 90 degrees north. And uh, the Y axis goes up is uh, time in days. So what you can see is when the, uh, uh, the, the this is uh, the difference between positive and the negative and the O. So uh, it, it's, it's the same, it's very similar to the positive, after positive and the O. So what you can see is that after positive and the O, about four, uh, two weeks, 14 days, there is a, a quite a sudden increase of zonal west wind over the equator. And the, the, this also happened in the model, it's an ECCC model, it's very similar. So the, the, this behavior after, after the NAO, the, there is uh, about two weeks after the, the increase of zonal wind in, in the tropical uh, Indian Ocean. So now uh, we will ask uh, if this kind of uh, uh, connection between the influence of the NAO can impact the MGO prediction scale. So when we look at the, uh, the S2S models, uh, there are 11 models. Uh, we look at the hand cost for, for the winter uh, period. So I don't want to show the, go detail of these models. So what I want to show is that uh, we select those cases when the uh, forecast is initialized with a strong NAO and that's when the NLO index is greater than one, and then compare that with the forecast with the weak NLO initialization, and also compare the uh, positive NLO uh, forecast and the negative NLO forecast. So there, there's quite a lot of cases uh, for those two kind of uh, 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 um, like categories of forecasts. So th this shows that the uh, uh, after about uh, 20 to 30 days after the NLO, you see the, the, the probability of the uh, phase of the NGO. For the error interim analysis, uh, you see that it, when the, uh, uh, after uh, 20 to 30 days after positive NLO, uh, you see the uh, increase of the uh, NGO phase six, phase seven, and uh, when the uh, NO is negative, you see the, uh, the increase of uh, occurrence of uh, MGO phase three and the phase two and the phase three. So the, the, this kind of uh, uh, relationship is, uh, ex exists, exists in almost all the models. Uh, you see the, uh, uh, some models, it's, uh, there is some more sensitive, some models is less sensitive. But it shows that after a uh, positive NLO, the MGO uh, tends to happen in phase six and seven. After a uh, negative NLO, MGO phase two and three uh, tends to happen uh, after about uh, 20 to 30 days. All right, so uh, but that's a phase. So about the amplitude. So the, the, this is the evolution of the MGO amplitude after a uh, strong and the weak NAO. So uh, for the error interim, that's a uh, reanalysis. Uh, you see there's about uh, 20 to 30 days 
the uh, strong NO uh, lead to a stronger uh, MGO, and also for the most of the models. Uh, but some models, like yesterday, we see that the, uh, the uh, most of the model, the, the amplitude of MGO decays, but there's uh, one model that increase. But uh, no matter it's increased or decreased, but the relative uh, amplitude between uh, and the positive, a uh, strong NO and a weak NO, uh, it's quite consistent. Okay, again, this shows the, uh, the uh, zero to 90 degree uh, average zonal wind at 200 millibar for all those models. So well, what you can see this after uh, about 15 days, most, uh, uh, most models can capture this uh, uh, like increase of zonal wind. Uh, over the equator. All right. Uh, okay, so that's uh, the high level. How about the lower level? Uh, 850 minibar, the uh, zonal wind and the ORR. So uh, for the for the uh, ray analysis, you see that the, uh, the, the, the blue contour is the elective zonal wind at 850 minibar. So you see the um, uh, and like uh, east to the wind anomaly and the reduced convection. And the, the, this corresponding to the negative uh, to MGO57, so what, what, what we uh, observed. And the, this kind of uh, distribution uh, is also uh, like simulated quite well in the uh, most of the S2S models. Uh, for the KMA model, they didn't provide the uh, ORR. So, but the wind structure is, is quite similar. Uh, uh, over uh, Indian Ocean, there's uh, easterly, and over Western Pacific, there's westerly wind anomaly. All right. So uh, let's look at the forecast scale, uh, like grouped by uh, uh, strong NAO uh, initialization and the weak NAO initialization. So the, the red curve, uh, that's the strong NAO start and the green is a weak, weak NAO start. So what you can see is that uh, after about uh, two weeks, uh, there is a separation and the uh, strong NAO lead to a better forecast scale for most of the models, almost all, all the models, except the one the JMA models, uh, probably at the end there is some signal and also the, the French model. But for the other models, it, it, the, uh, the, the scale is quite, uh, like uh, the, the difference is quite 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 uh, clear, and uh, we look at the, uh, the the lead time in days. How many days it dropped to zero point five? So that uh, can be regarded as the scale of the MGO. So the uh, orange bar is the strong NAO start, and the uh, light blue is the weak NAO start. So what you can see is that the uh, uh, the, the for most models, the strong NO uh, has uh, has a better, uh, like a longer forecast skill for the M MGO, and uh, for um, for the uh, um, um, Australian model uh, ECMWF and NSIP, uh, the strong NO they, they all can reach the the forecast skill of thirty days of MGO. Right. So, uh, how about the uh, general scale uh, instead of the uh, the, the MGO? So, the, the, this is the, uh, the 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 average correlation scale of zonal wind, uh, 200 millibar, uh, that's in black, and uh, the uh, zonal wind at 850, that's in red, and the ORR, that's in green. So, that's the average in the uh, MGO, the, the strong strong MGO uh, area. So uh, what you can see, that's uh, the, the, the dashed line that starts with the weak NO and the solid line that's uh, with the uh, strong NO. So almost for all those variables, you can see that uh, when you start the forecast uh, with uh, strong NO, you get a better scale. And the, uh, the ORR uh, has the, uh, the, the weakest uh, scale, so that can be expected. And the uh, 200 millibar zonal wind, the, the scale is the best. But uh, we do see that this scale 
difference between strong and uh, weak and the old forecast is, is quite clear for all those models. Hello, okay. about two or three minutes. All right, okay, I, uh, I, I'm about to finish. So there's an, also a dependence on the NO phase. Uh, we uh, compare the uh, start, the, the forecast starts with positive NO and the start with negative NO. So the, the conclusion is that when you start the forecast with negative NO, that's the green line, you get, uh, uh, for, for most of the models, you get a better forecast scale of the NGO. Uh, the reason, okay, so this is a summary. You see that the uh, negative NO leads to a better scale uh, of the NGO. So the, the reason we, we look at the uh, wave activity flux for the positive NO, and this is after uh, after 21 to 30 days uh, from the initial condition, in, initialization, you see that the uh, in both positive NO uh, forecast and a negative NL start, we see a strong like southward wave activity flux in the uh, tropical uh, in the tropical Atlantic. But in the negative NL uh, forecast, the, the southward wave activity is much stronger. So this can be uh, uh, the contour is the stream function. Uh, this can be linked to uh, when you have a negative NO after 20 to 30 days, you get the uh, uh, cyclonic circulation, there is a western wind uh, in the lower latitude in, in the North uh, Atlantic. So that helps the southward propagation, uh, propagation of the uh, uh, Rossby wave. And uh, the possible mechanism for this is that when you look at the DJF, uh, climatological uh, zonal wind at 200 millibar, you see there is a quite uh, area over the uh, tropical uh, um, Africa and the Indian Ocean. Uh, the, the, the basic state is easterly wind. So the south of world wave activity flux in the North Atlantic, can, when they reach this area, they, they can uh, become a forcing mechanism uh, for the tropical upper Kelvin wave. And there's uh, studies, uh, uh, earlier studies show that the uh, Tropical Kelvin wave is uh, can be uh, forced in the easterly wind uh, basic state, so that that can be the uh, uh, possible reason for why the the uh, North Atlantic uh, oscillation can propagate to influence the MGO. Okay, to summarize, is that uh, we see there is a substantial influence of the NAO on the MGO, and the NAO positive NAO lead to face six, seven, and negative NO lead to phase two and three. And then we see that the forecast uh, when initialized with strong NO can have a better MGO forecast scale than uh, weak NO. And the, also the phase of NO uh, has uh, uh, influence also. Negative NO tends to be uh, more skillful than uh, positive NO forecast. So, uh, okay, I will stop here. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, I have, uh, yeah, please uh, post your questions or raise hands if you have any questions. Um, I, I have a question. So a lot of the S2S community focuses on precipitation and two meter temperature. And I'd be interested if this state dependent predictability you have beautifully shown and demonstrated here um, translates to those variables. Uh, yes, the the, uh, the the examples I show here that's uh, for uh, for these three variables uh, that comp compose the uh, MGO index: uh, zonal wind uh, two two hundred and uh, zonal wind and A fifty and the ORR. So uh, I think uh, the, the, those uh, difference in the tropical precipitation. Uh, can be influenced as well because the ORR we see this difference, and the temperature uh, probably as well. But I didn't look at the temperature because the, the zonal wind at the lower level uh, is uh, uh, there's a difference. So I guess the the temperature also can can show some difference. Thank you.
Any other questions? There's a question from Antje. Antje, you wanna unmute yourself? Yeah, I, I was interested in your lab composites analysis where you, um, where you look at the MJO, NAO, NAO, MJO influence uh, or relationship. I wonder what would happen if you looked at the different phases of the NAO in a similar way in a lag composite um, analysis? Would you find kind of a cycle there? And if so, what what period or what what um, lagged time period is important there? Uh, you mean uh, for this uh, this kind of uh, analysis? Yeah. You, you separate yes. the. Uh, uh, because uh, the, 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 this is the uh, uh, take all the NLO. Uh, I am not sure how to how to get to the uh, only the positive NLO because the, the, this identify the uh, negative NLO that lead the MGO phase two and three and identify the positive NLO lead uh, MGO phase six and seven. So uh, if you only select one phase. Uh, you only get part of it. So uh, I, I guess, <laughs> is, is that right? Yeah. No, I, I probably meant more completely independent of the MJO phases, just between basically like the, like, like an autocorrelation of DNAO basically, but in terms of these pentate uh, legs. Uh, okay. So, uh, yeah, we 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 did the, uh, the this analysis, for example, for for the uh, uh, for, for the difference between the forecast scale of the MGO between uh, strong and the uh, weak uh, NLO. We did this only for uh, for the cases that has a very weak MGO at the beginning. So we still get this uh, influence. So that, that means that uh, it does not uh, depend on uh, in, initially you have a strong MG or not. Uh, yes. I don't know, is, is that answer your question? Uh, yes, I mean, it's very interesting. I think there are lots of angles. Yes, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, thank, you. thank you. Thanks so much. Um, uh, Jan had a question, if you'd unmute. First. Um, she had her hand up before me, so... Um, uh, yes, I decided to... Okay, sorry. Then uh, I can go ahead you with the <laughs> Yeah, um, thanks because I was much. interested in it and it brought in a new aspect. Yeah. Okay, thanks very much for this interesting talk. Um, I was wondering if you have looked at it, um, your relationship North Atlantic to the MGO um, from, a, from including more um, modes of variability for the North Atlantic, so including um, blocking over Europe and Atlantic Ridge, for example. Um, and if not, would you expect to get different results on the um, different impacts on the forecast scale using more modes of variability? Uh, we didn't uh, look at that, but uh, I think it's, it's an interesting uh, topic to, to do more investigation because uh, we, we pick up the NAO um, there is no reason why we not do other modes. Yeah, probably uh, if we pick at uh, the um, blocking and other European mode, you can also get some signal. But uh, yeah, I I'm not clear uh, now. But but uh, it's it's worth doing. Yeah, for sure. sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jacqueline. Please go ahead and mute and ask your question. Well, thank you. I was typing my question. Okay, so uh, so we know that the MJO occurs on like different synaptic patterns, like different seasons, different ends of states, and so it affects on the extratropics. For instance, in your case, the NAO can vary considerably. Have you looked at how does the NAO influence to the MJO at a specific season, for instance, or ends of state? Like, are you confident that your correlations for phase two and three or six and seven, do they happen or occur more frequently during a particular season, during a particular answer state? Can you comment on that? Thank you. 
Uh, yeah, that, that, that's an uh, interesting question uh, also. Um, the analysis we did is only for the uh, winter season uh, because we know that in winter, the uh, westerly uh, wind is strong uh, in the uh, rosp uh, exotropics and that's easier for raspberry waves to, to propagate. Uh, it's, um, in, in summer, probably the influence is not as clear um, but for other, like the, the uh, modulation of ENSO and uh, other uh, interannual variability, um, I, I think that some years when uh, the, uh, the, the, the background flow influenced by the ENSO can like more favorable for the propagation that can have a different uh, like uh, influence. But that, that, that is, um, I think, a further investigation and, to, to look at those interesting questions, it is, it's quite uh, useful. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, thank you so much, um, Eileen, for your uh, presentation. It's very interesting, a new perspective. Um, we are moving to the next talk by Charlie.